Welcome back to another episode of Microdose with Modos Cannabis. I'm your host, Mo, and today we're going to talk about the unsung heroes of the cannabis grow process, and that is the measurement of our pH and our total dissolved solids. So let's do a really quick crash course before we get into it. Ready? Let's go. Okay, so let's first start by talking about TDS, or total dissolved solids, which is the amount or the measurement of the amount of minerals or nutrients in our water or our reservoir. And then secondary we have uh, EC or electric conductivity and we have PPM or parts per million which is a measurement of those dissolved solids in the reservoir and honestly you can use PPM or EC it's totally your preference I'll talk about that in just a second but monitoring these is a really good indication of you know how our plants are feeding you want to monitor it to see if they're getting enough nutrients if they're getting too little etc so that's that. So let's first start by talking about EC or electrical conductivity. And first and foremost, I have to note that it is so popular, more so over PPM because it is a universal unit. But I'll talk about that in a second because PPM is not, so hold please on that. But in general, EC measures the ability to conduct electricity in whatever our nutrient solution is, so in this case water, and it also measures the total salts concentration in our solution. Now, when we're talking about PPMs or parts per million, I was basically raised growing using PPMs, if you will, and it does have you know two scales. So it has a 500 scale and the 700 scale, and in the United States, they often use the 500 scale and in Europe and other other places it usually uses the 700 scale so this can be really complicated but you can also really simplify it by making sure that whatever nutrient line that you're using is on the same scale as your meter your TDS meter so as long as your your nutrients is on the 500 line and your TDS meter is on the 500 scale you're good if your nutrient solution is on the 700 scale make sure your TDS meter is also on that same scale and problem solved. In this episode, we are also going to talk about the importance of pH, especially for our deep water culture grow, but in general, pH is so important for any kind of cannabis grow, whatever medium you're in, because, well, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So let's go into the intro and then into the details. <music> or water conductivity and if you have pure water or water that is has no nutrients in it whatsoever reverse osmosis water it has no electronic conductivity none whatsoever flat line and once you start to add nutrients it's a great conductor of energy it, it water is in general so when we're dealing with hydronutrients, a lot of them contain salts like our nitrates and using EC is a really, really great gauge to see how many nutrients we actually have in our water solution. So then we know, you know, basically kind of like how our plants are feeding, if it's high, if it's low and whatnot. So that's like a really, 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 really top line explanation. <laughs> So yes, I do have a preference for where I want my PPMs to fall at each phase of the grow. And I am using 500 scale, as I mentioned earlier, there's the 500 and the 700 scale. These numbers are my preference based on the 500 scale. I also do want to make sure that you are being aware of your PPMs of your tap water, right? So I don't use reverse osmosis or RO water. I haven't made that investment yet. It's just easier and more efficient for me to use tap water. So I need to factor in anything or any nutrients or any minerals that are included in my tap water. And so mine falls around 200 ppm. So I need to factor that in anytime I am adding nutrients to my babies and my cannabis plants. So for example, if the nutrient schedule has me at 600 ppm or in that range, if you will. I already know I have 200 dedicated to my tap water. I need to account for 400 through my nutrients. And a rule of thumb, I'll talk about this in my nutrient video, but 
you, I've never come across a grower or any line where it's like you want to go full strength based on the feeding schedule. So if, if you have general hydroponics, which is what I use, and it's giving you a feeding schedule, you never want to go 100% of what they tell you. You want to go for at least half of that. I prefer to go for a third and then up it from there. And I just say that because it also impacts the amount of nutrients that are present in our, or the PPMs, if you will, that are present in our, you know, our measurements. So if I am giving my plants a third of the nutrients, it actually kind of works in my favor because I already have 200 PPMs accounted for in my tap water. So just keep all of this in mind. When we're actually looking at whether our plants need more or less nutrients, our plants are actually communicating with us in a weird way. If I if I give my plants nutrients and four days later, they're drinking up those, those nutrients, I measure the PPMs and the PPMs are super, super low. That means that, you know, it's actually good. My plants are feeding heavy, they want more. So I'll give them more nutrients, I'll supplement them. If there's a situation where, you know, I feed them and then four or five days later, I see that the water or the PPMs have gone way up, that either means that the water level has gone so low and it's a really, really, really high concentration, so I just need to add water, or, you know, could be something else going on. Maybe there's nutrient lockout happening and I need to check the pH to make sure that they can absorb what's in the, in the water. But just keep all of this in mind and you're really just gonna have to start to feel, you know, and understand these concepts to really see what's going on with your plant. So I will keep the overview on pH or potential hydrogen short and sweet. pH is important as like super important, okay? So it measures the acidity and basicity of our pH. And why is that so important? Because if our cannabis plant, and specifically for DWC or deep water culture, your plant is not between, or your water is not between a 5.5 and a 6.5, you could be giving your plant or your water or your reservoir all the great nutrients. It won't absorb any of it if it is not between that specific pH. Okay, and I don't think you realize how important that is. This is definitely not something that you want to mess around with. So if there's nothing else you take away from this, keep that top of mind. Okay, <laughs> another thing I remember when I did my first couple grows, I was pH up and pH down queen. I was dropping in and dropping do, do, up a point, down a point. Like, I don't know who I thought I was. But let me tell you that those are extra chemicals that are completely unnecessary if you overdo it. And I was overdoing it. So if you need to pH up and pH down, first of all, I would recommend that you dilute it in a cup of water before adding it to your larger reservoir. That's one. Two, I would say that if you, you know, you add your all, all your nutrients, everything's mixed together, and your pH is at, let's say, a 6.8. I would honestly wait a day and see if your pH drops before adding any solution. Um, because oftentimes, if you're, you know, with DWC, you're aerating your your reservoir, and the pH is naturally going to drop. So it might just kind of fluctuate to where it needs to be if you give it time. Now, I wouldn't give it two or three days. You have to go ahead and check it the next day to make sure that everything is what it needs to be. But it might be unnecessary for you to go ahead and add the pH up or pH down. Um, so just keep that, you know, tucked in your back pocket for when you're, you know, pHing everything. And then another little trick that I have, so I use the five gallon buckets of water, and I find that one milliliter of, you know, if I'm going up or down with my pH, um, so if I use a, a drop of milliliter of pH up, it'll take it up a full point. So if I'm at a 5.8, it'll take it up to 5.9 if I use one milliliter and that's for a five gallon reservoir. So just helpful, hopefully. So before we wrap this video, we also need to really quickly touch on recalibrating our meters, our pH meters. So if you have a pH meter, $20 Amazon meter, not talking crap about you, I have one, I still use mine, I also have a good one, but I still use my one um, if it's in with an arm reach. You need to probably recalibrate that every two weeks. If you have a good quality meter, let's say $50, $70 range, 
you can probably get away with monthly and definitely at a very minimum you need to recalibrate in between grows okay but i have a video on all of this so check it out don't forget to like subscribe all of that jazz and feel free to like comment and stuff let's talk about it let's talk about these things okay i'll see you next time